So moving on then to the, uh, the, the next question, this organization or company or party that you intend to contract with, I call the EPC main contractor for the nuclear new build, will this uh, EPC main contractor uh, for the new build be required to be a South African company in which, for example, the nuclear vendor, ESCOM itself, some of the major contractors, for example, the civil contractor, and perhaps BE partners, etc., are shareholders. In other words, will this be a new special purpose vehicle set up as an EPC main contractor to handle the construction side of the project? I think that the important thing to go this way is, is that is exactly how these projects are usually done. It is how Kuburg was done, it is how um, both the bids for Nuclear One, that's one from Arriva and from Westinghouse, were structured, and it's one how I think most of the ones in the world are structured. Because you're looking for a turnkey contract to begin with. Um, you cannot, even on a nuclear plant being built in France or in, or in elsewhere in the world, you will find that there are several contractors involved, several key contractors. In Nuclear One, for example, there was, in every each case, there was a, a reactor vendor, there was a turbine vendor, there was a civil works contractor, and in some cases, a couple of the contractors as well. And these are all integral part of the offer. Often in the national situation, and this is an example where the French, for example, are building um, Flammerville in France, then what you have is you have a... Uh, the, oh, the, the, the utility becomes the integrator, becomes the EPCM contractor. In, that was not the case in Kuburg. And so what we expect to do is we expect them to form a company to be the EPC contractor, which will have uh, either shareholding from the different parties or at least be a JV between them. And classically in this situation, what you have is that the JV, the guarantees to the customer are provided both from this JV but also uh, jointly and severally from the different principal parties. So you'd expect to see the reactor vendor, the turbine vendor all having um, joint and several uh, guarantees on the plant. Our view at the moment is that this plant will, this company will start out and unusually, unlike, and I use the example of Kubo because we know Kubo very well, Unlike in Kuburg, where, where, where Framatech, which was this organization, was dissolved when Kuburg was completed. And Framatech was essentially was a paper company. It, it was, it was, a, it was a, uh, a legal company, but it wasn't actually um, uh, a staffed up company doing design work. We are going to, we intend to request to the vendor, or we'd like the vendor to, create a proper EPC contracting company, which is staffed up and does the physical work in South Africa as the local contracting agent. And we would like the ownership of this thing to be split between ourselves and the vendor. The vendor would hold the vast majority of the shares, say 74%. And ESCOM or another South African entity under government control would hold 26%. There's also key to the IP we discussed earlier. Because the view that we're taking is that the, um, the IP for the design will be transferred to this company by the vendor at the beginning of the process. Clearly, we'd have no access to that IP because it belonged to the company. We'd only be a minority owner of the company, and the majority owner of the company will control it. However, the view is that we would consider the prospect of um, having the right to take on more shares in this company as we ordered more reactors. So the aim would be that we'd end up with a situation where as we steadily moved the technology, the, the, the program extended, the ownership of the um, uh, IP would move de facto from being controlled by the vendor to ultimately being controlled by a SAFG entity. It also means the problem of establishing the uh, EPC company becomes an issue for the experienced vendor, not for ESCO. And we can do the same thing on component, on large component issues where the same thing might happen. A possible way. We certainly don't think it's the only way, but we'd ask the vendor to say, are they happy with that? Is another way of doing it? Um, I think what we are saying is it's very difficult to negotiate, to promise to negotiate something in the future is very challenging because the world changes. They'll promise you the world today and eight years from now they'll say, uh, we didn't quite mean that. 
So our view largely is that we like to get everything locked in to begin with. So although we have no access and no rights to begin with, if we certain things have achieved, then we get those access and rights. And that's going to happen in other countries across the world. It's not unusual. That particular formula is unusual, but but the rights are. Mm.